Hey guys, just a one minute lead in before I get to the chapter reading. Um, but this chapter essentially is the last page of the book, or the last chapter in the book. In other words, if somebody said to me, Matt, if you had two hours or less to put all the pieces together, to explain what this reality construct is all about in that amount of time, and do it in a way that people can understand, this is my absolute best effort in doing that. It's the culmination of everything that I've studied and looked at for about 10 years now. Um, I'm an observer of reality. I have no insider information. I have no whistleblowers like Mr. Beaks in the orange section. Nobody's come to me. People have shared emails and comments, and that, that has, um, that has I would say, if nothing other than rubbed off on me. I have listened to this community very, very closely, and it, it has helped shape my opinion of things. But for this type of video, assuming that there's even a chance that I got close to the mark, you know, that'll be up to you, but it is important to show you who put the information together for those not familiar or that don't have a history with me through this channel and the last. Uh, by the way, there's a lot more chapters in the book that I'm going to deliver. There's 10 more chapters at least of just the endless, presenting the endless fraud that this reality construct heaps on us constantly. But if by any chance I got somewhat close to the mark in this video, I, I didn't want to hold it back. Who knows if this channel will even be here two or three months from now. It was organized, it was ready, I wrote it up, and I, I need to present it now. Again, who knows where any of us will be two or three months from now. So do you need me just piling on with more, presenting more and more fraud of this world that you already know about anyway? No. That's interesting to look at, and I hope you'll stick with me through all those chapters. Plus, there's 10 or 15 chapters coming that in more detail explain what's here. This is the summary, even though you say an hour and a half, a summary, yeah. It, it, there's a whole lot more uh, in, in many, many chapters to explain this, if anything's not clear. But this is this is the last chapter of the book, and this is where I try to put all the pieces together. It'll be up to you to see if I got anywhere close. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, it's Matt. Uh, I don't think I can wait to present the last page of the book, or whatever my conclusions might be. I hope you'll stick with me, though, for every chapter of the book. Who knows where we'll be in two or three months. This can't wait. And I have organized everything, so I thought, well, what am I going to just sit on this for a few months? No, I'll get it out there. That's very intense. Uh, I think you'll, I'm going to go very slow. I hope you will consider each point closely. It's very hard, I, I believe, to listen to this while uh, doing other things. A note to the YouTube channel before reading. Uh, it should go without saying that all of this is my opinion. Much of the below or what will follow here is not my original ideas, and I've adapted a lot of what I've learned from others. However, I think I've tied it together uh, in a unique way. I've studied the way reality is presented to us, and I compared that to a massive amount of philosophy, theory, experiment, things I've come across, read, videos, um, hundreds of different sources and people, all combined here, going all the way back to Plato's allegory of the cave. This is my best effort in putting all the jigsaw pieces together in one place. You can call this the final page of the book, but it's a heck of a long page. It's too important, like I said, to hold back and wait till the real last chapter can be presented. Now the second to last page or chapter of the book is my best understanding of every major fraudulent event. Did any planes hit on 9-11? Which of the major shootings, if any, were real? Did JFK actually die? And on and on and on. The second to last page of the book will be all of these types of things times a hundred. Everything, I believe, in terms of all the things we've covered over the last ten years. Now this will keep the reality junkies coming back. But this chapter clearly says you don't need any of that information. It's all the useless chasing of a rabbit hole. Nevertheless, I'll present it, and I've promised to present it. But you have all you need to know already. Let me begin with this. If you crave to know the second to last page of the book and some of the things I just described that I'll be talking about, then you have a lot of work to do. 
when you're ready to graduate this whole truth fiasco you won't give a crap about understanding the X's and the O's of how all the frauds were perpetrated on us when you're ready to win you won't give a shit who done it on the Orient Express although I'm calling this the last page of the book and my best understanding I hope you'll stay with me as I present the next 20 to 25 chapters or so if nothing else it's a documentation of the fraudulent history that's been presented also there's about a hundred pages explaining the following or this presentation in more detail if there's any part of this that you truly don't understand as we go through this over the next hour or so again I'm not going to be using the words I think or this is likely it's obviously all my opinion so I will simply present it as what is finally I have no insider information or whistleblower information the system blows the whistle on itself because of how poorly its presentation of reality has gotten since about 2012. I'm not initiated in anything, nor do I want to be. I'm simply an observer of reality. This is everything I know described in the simplest way that I can. Who knows how close the following will come to hitting the mark. There is no death the way the atheist describes it. Now we've all heard this before. We're an immortal being having a 3D Earth experience. Guess what? That's correct. There's so much evidence against atheism at this point, it's almost funny. It would be easier to prove Daffy Duck built the Great Pyramid than for an atheist to prove all of this is the result of an explosion, something just blowed up. You are an immortal spirit having an earthly experience. The problem is, the realm is designed so you don't know you at all. The realm sees to it that you are a body and an ego having an earthly experience. Your spirit is locked in the trunk. Again, this realm is designed to convince us that the experience is for the ego and the body. If we realize this trick and other tricks, we can win. If not, we lose. The ego working together with the body to screw you over needs a name. Until someone offers me a better one in the comments, I'll use Master Blaster, the combined creature from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. It was the massive, dumb body carried that little dwarf on its back as the ultimate brains and brawn combination. A truth drop in that movie? Perhaps. Remember the little dwarf looked up into the video camera. He was looking at Tina Turner and said, Who run Barter Town? I could do better in the accent. But, you know, yeah, barter town, buy and sell. The ego and the, and the body run barter town. That's all this reality wants us thinking about ourselves. We've heard that phrase, immortal spirit having a 3D experience so much, it becomes a cliche almost. But you know what's really exciting? When we can prove it. We know it's true because of how much attention that they pay to us. If we're all just bodies walking around the shopping mall, slowly rotting away, then they wouldn't care so much about us, would they? If billions of us were just a few ticks of the cosmic clock away from going into the dirt like the atheists tell us, and that's all there was, then they wouldn't have constructed the most massive machine in the universe in an endless attempt to get our attention and to direct our actions. Simply, if we weren't immortal spirit, then they wouldn't give a shit. Do they give a shit? Absolutely and positively, they give a shit. We're all that they seem to fuss over. If we were just atheist dirt turds, we wouldn't produce the energy from which they feed on. If we're just atheist dirt turds, they'd be better off harvesting mushrooms in dark warehouses. But they don't do that, do they? They harvest us. And up to this point, they've been very successful. The pusher man of reality is now a million times bigger than King Kong. At what it wants is your attention, energy, and emotional involvement. Since it can't suck your breath directly, it seems like a Harry Potter dementia, it can only have its way with you when you engage with its screen. The screen is the crafted modern society that surrounds you like an IMAX, and it gets in your face all day long. There are three elements to this realm. Three. 
One, there's you, which is your consciousness, the spark of life, in your avatar body. Body and consciousness is you here on this realm. Two, there's your immediate vicinity around you, but inside your reality bubble. Your cat jumping up on your lap inside your reality bubble. Mostly real as well. Three, wrapped around your reality bubble on the perimeter is the puppet master's screen wrapped around your reality bubble. Think of the way a bus is wrapped with an Ashley Madison advertisement. You're the bus driver. You're Sandra Bullock in the movie Speed. Throughout your life, other beings of consciousness get on and off your bus and come in and out of your reality bubble from time to time. From their perspective, you get on and off their bus, and they're the driver. Reality spheres can join for example, when you give your wife a kiss goodbye before a business trip, or the librarian gets in your face and demands the 50 cents for a late book. You and what gets inside your reality bubble is real. The screen all around you is artificial. Again, to summarize, first area, you, that's real. Second, the bubble vicinity, your cat on your lap, petting your dog. It's mostly real. Third, the 360 degree IMAX screen, an artificial pusher man run by assholes. Fake. Guess what? The screen has a powerful secret tool to shape and influence you. Over time, it's become a double agent for the system itself. It's called your own ego. You think ego is you? You think the frontal lobes of the brain that thinks in the spellcraft called English is you? Think again, or better yet, don't think at all if you want the real truth. More on that later. Consciousness. It's not spawned between the ears in a slimy pile of cholesterol. Consciousness comes from somewhere else. The brain is a receiver and a conduit between your spirit self and the car that you've rented on Earth to get around, your body. The movie Avatar a truth drop? Definitely. Think of a pilot flying a plane, or the person inside one of those robots in that movie Pacific Rim. Remember the movie, pull a people, person pulling the lever inside the giant robot in Pacific Rim? The pilot can fly the plane, but the pilot knows very little about how the plane actually works. All he can do is fly it, and he can find the laboratory. He can't repair the engine or do almost anything else that the plane requires to maintain itself. Your body, same way, is not you. The reality projection from the screen wants you believing that Master Blaster, the ego and the body, is all that's important in this realm. No, that's you. You're Master Blaster. That's what the screen will teach you. No, the body is separate from what you know of as you. That's what, the way you should be thinking about it, the opposite of what society tells us. And for crying out loud, a woman doesn't even know when she's pregnant. How can the body be of you if that's the case? Think about it. Sure, you can run up the driveway, but you don't have a clue how that's accomplished in terms of heartbeats, eye blinks, white muscle fibers twitching. We don't know for two days or so that we have the flu, or two months or more, if we have something worse, why can't the body simply send us a message, like put a rash on the back of our hand or something, so we don't go on that road trip to the neighboring university to sleep on beer-soaked floors? The best analogy for your life is, it's a first-person video game controlled by you from somewhere else. The avatar doing the tomb raiding ain't you. Hey Darwin, you friggin' asshole! In a few hundred million years, the body couldn't figure out a quick way to tell me that I'm pregnant? Just had to find out on my own when I missed? Perhaps Darwin, you, you asshole, you want to rethink your two-bit theories. I didn't study anthropology at Harvard, but it seems rather important to natural selection for a person to realize that they're carrying another life inside of them. If Darwin's theories were real, the body could have found a way to create a tattoo of the cookie monster on the back of your hand if it was needed to tell someone that they're pregnant to protect the life inside of them. Getting back on track, 
it doesn't matter how real the environment around you is. Whatever you see as the edge of your reality bubble, it doesn't matter. Whether real or quantumly fluid dream, it matters not to the purpose of fulfilling our earthly life journey, the life test. Well, what is the shape of our Earth? Is the video game environment flat? Not only will I say, who cares? That's one of the many tricks being played on us here. There's nothing more that the puppet masters behind the screen love than people spending endless hours examining the characteristics of the game board. Everything outside of yourself is of the screen. We know the screen is a fraud and a trick of the system. It's even possible the reality construct is able to show two sides of an argument, facts that support both the yin and the yang at the same time, which should be impossible if this world was, quote, real. Yes, this reality can make Don Lemon both straight and gay at the same time. On Saturday morning, two people of the opposite sex make their way home from Don's apartment in the Atlanta suburbs on the same morning, having never met each other. During sex, he asked both of them to refer to him as the Wild Cheeto. Perhaps it's time to start treating life like a dream that mated with a video game. Could a dream that mated with a video game show Flat Earthers and Globe Earthers competing information at the same time? Of course it could. Anything would be possible. If you let go of everything we were told to hold on to as to what this reality must be. In a video game that mated with a dream, I could wake up one morning with a whale's dick. Anything would be possible. It would explain, then, why there should be 1,000 videos and 50 crystal clear still images of something hitting the South Tower, when instead we have about five of one and zero of the other. Matt, what's the hierarchy of control here on this plane, on this realm? It doesn't matter in the slightest, because this realm is your life test. And I can assure you that no part of your life test has a question like this, or one that asks, Who did George Bush report to? Question 10. If that question actually does appear on your life test, you're allowed to write this in. Who gives a flying fuck? And guess what? If you write that in, you'll get full credit. You'll get it marked as wrong if you actually try to figure it out and answer it with a big, long, written explanation. Because that's what they want you to do. What you do for yourself here is all that's important. Is getting the bad guys important? Nope. It wants you running around trying to do that. Is putting Hillary in jail important? Nope. How about all those emails that Alex Jones said was on Wiener's computer? Nope. It dangles those carrots on its screen on purpose, so you get involved with it. Is taking back the country with Mark Levin's Constitutional Convention important? Nope. They really laugh their asses off when people suggest that using corrupt elements of the screen can fix other corrupt elements of the screen. This is the ultimate screen problem, your reaction, and then screen solution. Oh no, uh, Daffy Duck is sick. Quick, go find an animator to draw a cartoon doctor so he can be cured. That's like using an element of the system to try to fix an ele another element of the system. All that's important is that you use the tools this realm affords us, what this realm gives us, and all the tools we have to work with to pass our own life test. You must do for yourself here. That's it. Very simple. Nike's just do it? A truth drop of some kind? Yeah, probably. If this do-for-yourself sounds selfish, then that's the script of this reality that you've been conditioned to parrot back. Even regarding your kids, you can put them on the right path, but they must do for themselves to pass their own life test. This is an individual life test. The Lochnar is here to coax you to shove your number two pencil up your own ass. Again, the reality junkies who love to have five-hour debates of planes versus no planes demand to know the hierarchy of things here, like I just stepped off a Rothschild pl private plane and I know it all. To me, there is no hierarchy, because there's only the screen. The Legion of Doom presents a hierarchy, with Lex Luthor in control of that cartoon, but to you, 
as an observer of the screen, does it really matter? Does a cartoon hierarchy have anything to do with your own reality bubble and you? If all that is real is you and your reality bubble's immediate vicinity, hierarchy questions about what appears on the screen makes no sense. In 2019, if the screen is society itself, I admit, it's pretty hard to sidestep that monster. It's not like we can just be Jeremiah Johnson and go live up in the mountains and skin grizz, if you've seen that recently. Not that it matters, but I'll review this one more time. If you see their fat face on television, then they decide nothing or next to nothing. Think of presidents and prime ministers as actors, nothing more. There are likely others in an unknown penthouse level you will never see or hear about. I'll give, him that, give you that, but we need to stop chasing them. We'll never know exactly who those people are. They're fulfilling a role here, a, f- a role that's actually helping you meet and pass your life test. There are also others who appear to be creepy handlers, like Dick Cheney and Jared Kushner, who may be allowed in the elevator that goes up to the top of the pyramid, whoever's up there that we don't care about, because we're here to work on ourselves. George Bush, by the way, has never even been allowed to sniff the new carpet in the elevator that goes up to the top of the pyramid. He once came before the elevator operator with a meat and cheese plate of human flesh, asking to go up and serve it to them, but he was turned away. They quickly installed a retinal scan, so George Bush can't even call for that elevator anymore. Actually, the top of the pyramid and that image implies it all comes together in a single point. And there must be something at that single point. In this snow globe, there may not be a final boss level or a final curtain to pull back. Because the nature of this reality is to serve up an endless list of bad guys, an endless list of culprits to chase, it suggests to me that there may be no Lex Luthor to find at all. But the screen will dangle evidence that he exists before all of us, and you should keep looking for him until you're about age 85, because you're just so close to finding him. Just another few more weeks. That's what they do to us. If you're successful, of course, and you pull back that final curtain, then you can finally watch Hillary go to jail while being extremely proud of your new t-shirt that says in a gigantic letter, Q. No, when you get close to anything on the screen... Reality will quite literally move the goalpost on you. Are we going to keep playing this game? Or are we going to say like Vin Diesel said, I don't play this any longer? No, but you'll need to put a few more months of study into Mud Flood to position yourself as a truther to close in on the answer again. Does anybody doubt that reality will be able to move the goalpost again with another rabbit hole when it needs to? Think about it. Of course it can. Have we not learned our lesson? Yes, at this point, I believe reality insertions are not just probable, but likely. And I don't mean to imply George Bush is up there and Rothschilds and they're pulling levers. No, these are minions here executing a role. I'm saying... There's no boss level pulling levers, what they implied in the the Wizard of Oz. It's the nature of reality itself to change the fabric of itself in front of our very eyes or move the goalpost. It's not, you can't think of it at like a boss level, okay? But nevertheless, we know and, and it's becoming predictable how this reality operates. It doesn't mean we have to try to find out who's pulling levers. There isn't anybody pulling levers. But sometimes to understand certain things, you almost have to think about that there is. I mean, it's, sometimes it's the best way to put it in our analogies. So the 360-degree screen and whatever it is, or whomever it is, if you want to put it that way, that stands behind the screen plays an endless trick. Okay, that is its role. Your entire life is not what it seems. Almost nothing works the way they told you it does. We know this. Understanding how reality works is not important, because this is your life test. And on your life test, it's not figuring out what George Bush is up to. Your life test is not dependent on knowing how many frauds are in the House of Representatives. Just say all of them, and that'll work. Knowing how many frauds actually are in the Roman Senate, though, is easy, because it's always a 100. 
Start by doing what Yoda suggested to Luke in the swamp. He's now homeless because Trump has drained it. He said, you must unlearn what you have learned. I was going to try to do uh, Yoda, but that would have been a disaster. So unlearn everything you learned in school. Throw out whatever the modern society minions like the news have taught you and replace it with what you've learned for yourself. There's something here manipulating reality from behind the screen, and it makes Darth Vader look like a Boy Scout. Pausing from my reading for just a moment, again, we're, we're picturing something standing there behind the screen, but it, it, it may just be the nature of the way this reality works and the reason why it was constructed. Okay, so We're just going to assume it's a little fat guy with levers. That's an easier way of understanding it, but don't get fixated on that because there's probably nobody there. Reality manipulation occurs, and this is done by tricking humanity. We don't know what it is, but for our purposes, we will call it the creature that stands behind the screen. Some people, like me, prefer the Loch Nahr, as heavy metal fans. The screen is the entire society that surrounds you, constantly begging for your attention. Its nickname is The System. What crafts its projection is not of men or of women, regular men and women. This means that by definition, it is of alien or technological intelligence, which is also alien. Christians call it Satan, of course. Satan is an archetype and a metaphor, but your understanding of Satan may be the best description for what it does. Its goal is incredibly simple and predictable, to pull you and to pull collectively humanity off your life path. It's the corrupter. It coaxes you to walk its road instead of your own through a series of tricks. Yes, I understand it sounds just like Satan. I already acknowledge that. Something like Satan and Lucifer doesn't permeate every aspect of our culture for thousands of years and pervades all of our history if there's no truth in it. Of course there's truth in it. For crying out loud, this reality reveals truth in the Family Guy and other cartoons. So of course there's tremendous truth in the Bible, but I don't think it should be read literally. The fleeing of Egypt means something else. David defeating Goliath means something else. I don't think it was a little guy going up against a big guy. I think it means something else. About a minute ago I said this. There is something here manipulating reality from behind the screen. This was mostly wrong. The screen is not reality. The Lochner can manipulate its screen and try to convince your ego that it's real. If your ego, the double agent, can convince the real portion of your badass immortal consciousness self that it's real, well then the screen just screwed you over to manifest the hell inside of your own reality bubble. It just got you to pick up Thor's hammer for it. It can't even pick up a toothpick from behind the screen. It needs you to do it for it. Okay, let's pause, regroup. We sense this life has real meaning and consequences. We sense we are here to do something important for ourselves. This is a giveaway, because we can observe the endless tricks of society's scream, which is trying to get us to do something else. Why does the screen try so hard if the stakes are just low? It puts in such effort as the pusher man that it confirms for us the way it acts confirms on its own how important this life test is to all parties. If we believe we're immortal spirit, then just use the process of elimination. What the heck else are we doing here then if this is not a life test to improve ourselves in some way? Are the earthly pleasures of getting jacked off and eating a cheesesteak so friggin' great that it overrides that the kids across town are dying of dread diseases at St. Jude Hospital? And 250 million people were killed by their own government in the 20th century? Yeah, that's correct. 250 million people, not including war. Look up democide. Uh, related to or plus the University of, of Hawaii and see what page comes up. Democide and the University of Hawaii. Well, with Mao responsible for 60 million deaths himself, I guess the 250 million number isn't really that hard to reach. 
look, on this realm, there's a lot of heaven, but the amount of hell is growing or seems to be growing exponentially. Right here at this moment is where I differentiate from those uh, that, you know, have popular opinions on YouTube that this is simply a prison planet of harvesting and an almost never-ending recycle center. Uh, that the beast and the beastmasters have complete control over. I just don't see it the way they do because they don't see it as a life test. They see it simply as a prison planet, a harvesting center, and then a recycle center. Uh, I disagree. Uh, I just think if that was the case, they wouldn't have clear limitations where they can't they can't step over. They would have more direct control over us uh, if it's simply a prison planet harvesting center. Um, it wouldn't. It would. They would be more uh, aggressive and uh, more controlling. They wouldn't need to be as manipulative if this is just a lockdown prison planet. The tricks wouldn't be so uh, pervasive with the need to also show us the tricks for those with the eyes to notice that there's an inflated tire under the North Tower. If it's a prison planet lockdown center recycling system, Harry Potter dementia is just sucking your energy and you die and then you come right back again. I don't, it doesn't make sense why some of the clues are shown to us. It doesn't make sense why certain amounts uh, of heaven still exist here. It doesn't make sense that they have such limitations in pulling off the trick. I'm still going away from the book because this has to be explained and I didn't do a good enough job. I'll have to rewrite this section. But just think of Shawshank Redemption. Uh, you know, if this is just a prison planet, lockdown center, energy harvesting. Uh, remember Shawshank? They could do whatever they want. Uh, Hadley. The blue, he didn't like the way you looked at him. He'd throw you right off the roof. Remember they were tarring the roof? He'd just throw you right off the roof. They had full control. If that's all it was, the prison planet, we'd have captains of the guard, Hadleys everywhere, and they would be able to do whatever they want. Why would they need to, why would they need, if, they, if it's just a prison planet, why would they need to play tricks? Like Hadley on the roof would say, well, I can't throw the, uh, Andy Dufresne off the roof directly. I, get, I need to get him to step off the roof himself. I can only go so far. It doesn't make sense. If it's a life test, it's, we're not just going to be born here and have sunshine blown up our ass. If it's a life test, it's going to be hard. It's going to be pretty screwed up. But they can only go so far. Again, like the the captain of the guard saying, I, you know, I'd like Andy Dufresne to get, to go off the roof, but he, I need to trick him to do it to himself. If it's a lockdown center, they grab you by the back of the neck, like like they almost did in Shawshank, and throw you off the roof. Th- this is where the all the evidence points. This is a life test, much more than a prison planet locked down by archons. If there's a screen that surrounds your reality bubble that wants you to engage with it then that clearly tells us that no answers in life will come from out there. All that's out there is the screen. If you don't go within to find the answer, then you will be without. Look deep within yourself, Clarice. A hint to get Clarice to a storage facility so she can find the transgender head of Benjamin Raspel? Or potentially another movie truth drop? To me, of course it is. Here's my interpretation of as above, so below. To me, the above is your life as you conduct your avatar here in this realm, thus affecting so below, your inward self or spirit. Again, the best metaphor for the system is the screen. Metaphor. I don't actually mean there's a screen wrapped around us, but that actually might not be far from the way reality is presented. Although, in this case, it is still just a metaphor of the screen wrapped around us and its false images. Remember, our reality bubble is like a bus wrapped with an advertisement for American Idol. Another truth drop? Yeah, certainly. The creature behind the screen, the Loch Nahr, whatever, reality itself, projects a hundred million images onto it, which are like advertisements. All advertisements intend for you to take some action. All of them. The screen is a candy store with every flavor of distraction for a human being. 
it presents an absurd Donald Trump tweet here, and then there's an Ellen degenerate selfie. Here's a new Porsche, a Mars mission. Now the, there's a stock market crash coming up on the screen, a school shooting, a fire, an assassination. How much of the screen is real versus fake? Sure, the weather report may be pretty real, but for the rest of it, who cares? If it projects up on the screen, it's not on your yellow brick road. So how it got up there doesn't matter. If it's on the screen, it wants you enthralled with it. The system knows every kind of person intimately, and it puts customized images onto the screen built for every type of person. To your dumb neighbors across the street, the screen projects Ryan Seacrest frolicking around on the red carpet. To your cousin, it presents Tiger Woods uh, first with a mug shot and and an incident with his wife, and then a really interesting comeback story. To you, the righteous truther, it projects inflated tires under the North Tower. You take Spike Lee's advice and do the right thing by studying the screen for a decade, searching for all the important answers around all of the crap events that it throws up in our face. Then we watch Silence of the Lambs for the 25th time, and we give no thought to Hannibal Lecter's look deep within yourself, Clarice. Even if you disagree with me on that particular example, the screen will pass hints all day long as to what you should be doing. Some cosmic law that they seem to have to uh, pay attention to. It starts with simply noticing what it wants you to do. What does it want you to do? You know that it's both inverted and perverted, so we know to do the opposite. If you're really confused, just walk the middle path between the strange opposites that this realm presents. From the 2004 King Arthur movie, says... Tristan, how do you do that? I aim for the middle. A truth drop? Perhaps. The screen has an inverted and perverted map of success for your life. If you walk the path the screen lays out before you, it will make it seem to you like you're being rewarded. A $500,000 home mortgage and $1,200 a month in car leases is rewarded with a false prestige that society will bestow on you, to some degree, and probably a few sex acts. You sit in your car at night sniffing the leather smell of the new automobile while the creature behind the screen laughs. It's probably safe to assume that the creature that projects the screen's image is rewarded too in some way. But who is the creature? What does it get out of it? Why does it do it? Who works for it? Who does it report to? What are the roles of its minions? The who, what, where, when, why, and how about the nature of this sim reality are distractions the system wants you to chase all day long. All of it doesn't matter. If we could figure out exactly what's doing it to us, we would have already known by now. We'd have it figured out. It's likely in the nature of reality itself that it will never be discovered. It's possible there are no creatures or entities at all behind the final curtain. Again, it's possible this reality construct is such that there is no boss level at all. It may simply be the nature of reality. A life test to project endless things on the screen to chase. For mutant types like us, this is a reality generation program like a holodeck of endless conspiracy and endless rabbit holes that go deep, deep down and we know will never end. We're like Lucy in the Chocolate Factory, shoving these conspiracies in our mouth, asking for more. But they aren't chocolate balls. They're rabbit turds. The creature, through a society it crafted, works tirelessly to bait its hook and dangle its carrot on the screen for you. It has crafted a very detailed reality script that it has successfully imposed on most souls here. It has incorporated an army of minions as middlemen and character actors to influence humanity to walk in its preferred direction, which is away from the human being's pure and intended path. A few of the carrots it dangles are materialism and ego, status and sex acts, among many, many others. 
The carrots are all distractions, and all of them are, again, as a reminder, they're all out there, appearing on a stage outside of ourselves. When a citizen is successful in grabbing a carrot, it can be trivial, like seeking a celebrity's autograph, or it can be something major, like something tied to the seven deadly sins. As I said, the correlation to Satan in all this is beyond obvious. But if it's so obvious, then we probably know it's not that simple. That's not how this reality works. If the answer seems obvious in what they're doing, it's not obvious. Uh, Matt, the burning of the Notre Dame Cathedral is just part of a war against Christianity. Uh, nope, that's way too obvious. They're playing multi-dimensional chess and most of us are playing checkers. Whatever projects the screen has endless minions here in this realm. Minions, you could think of them as little goblin creatures. Politicians at all levels. Corporate CEOs. Religious evangelists. News anchors. Celebrities. Individuals like Alex Jones and what that person's role is. Spike Lee and what that person's role is. Madonna. It goes on forever. Nobody on TV has any power, even presidents, or especially presidents. Almost everyone that appears on TV is a minion that carries the screen's baton in some way. However, over 99% of these people aren't in on it. They don't have all the information. You know much more than they do. For example, the news anchors are simply useful idiots who, in doing the bidding of the creature behind the screen, which is metaphorical, it might not even exist, they, these news anchors think they're helping people by presenting what they believe is accurate information. Trust me, people like Don Lemon don't have a clue as to what's really going on. You know much more. Now, there are, there are individuals, okay? Anderson Cooper probably knows what's going on, probably has uh, insider information that you and I don't have, probably is in some of the dark back rooms, the way we describe them. Oh, he was just a CIA intern. Well, they just throw intern. It just means he, he's still there. Um, Alex Jones uh, several times has talked about this family, uh, has history going back to the Rosicrucians. He likely knows exactly what his role is and is privy to to many things that we're not but most of these people most of them like spike lee doesn't know he's being i'm off the book here but spike lee doesn't know he's being uh, used and manipulated to stir up race relations he just think he's uh he's just think he's all that and he's so great and everybody loves him and he's actually helping fight the man he doesn't understand the pawn he is uh, don lemon they, these they, people don't have a clue Trust me, only a very few do. And that's what the, the evil genius of the system is how it gets so many people fulfilling exactly what it wants, like corporate CEOs. And that corporate C CEO, they don't, they don't go in and, and, ha and have tea with a, some creature or Satan. They're just fulfilling, but they're doing exactly what the screen wants, but most are unknowing. That's the amazing genius of it. Most of what we call news is crafted and fake, for lack of a better word. This fake news mantra that came up through Trump, and it was basically a truth drop. It's, it was an announcement to everybody that the news they present is fake, not that they're going after what uh, alternative sources like we're talking about. They're talking about fake news, which is a truth drop that everything that they're saying is fake. But, of course, nobody interpreted like that uh, in our little circle of friends, families, and neighbors. It's just the fake news presented by people like us needs to be stopped. It's, it's, it's always the inverse, inversion. So most of the news is fake. In this life matrix, though, think of yourself as Dorothy, who was supposed to use the true path of the yellow brick road to reach a spiritual destination for yourself. Think of the creature as having hijacked everything in Oz but you, and a few other spirits here that are trying to level up. To impede your progress, the creature lines the entire yellow brick road with poppy fields and perverted scarecrows. One scarecrow even offers that you can light him on fire during sex, if that's your thing. Every five feet 
along the yellow brick road, it presents a new temptation and another distraction for Dorothy to choose to get molested by. The temptations along the road abound, but it must get Dorothy to walk toward the perversions on her own and embrace the perversions on her own. She must willingly agree to go with the flying monkeys as their invited guest. She can't be touched directly. She cannot be jumped from behind a bush while on the yellow brick road, while on the true path. She dives into the bush, well, sure, certainly she can be molested. And of course, they can use humans to screw over other humans. We're always allowed in the system to corrupt ourselves. Most of the thousand distractions it places before us seem minor and benign. Most are just little paper cuts that suck tiny little pieces of your spiritual being or essence and here and there, and they take a soul token from you here and there. The system shows inhuman patience, not just in your own life, in your own corruption, but in taking down what seems to be all of humanity. Oh, a couple hundred years? That's no problem to what we call the screen or the system. Also probably proves that the minions uh, recycle themselves back here and likely will are, are doomed, basically doomed to this realm. We'll talk about that some other time. The most obvious and pathetic tactic of the system in the screen is the first play in their playbook, the one that aims to divide humanity. Oh, they just do divide, 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 divide. That's all they love to do. Again, if we weren't powerful creatures, why would they constantly give a shit about us? Minions like Spike Lee aren't in on it, like I've said. The system brings people like that runt into prominence because their talent does exactly what the screen wants puts people into camps. His movie implied that burning down Sal's famous was the right thing to do. As we've discussed many times, the divide and conquer camps are almost endless. Are you a Black Lives Matter or Aryan Brotherhood? Are you Republican, Democrat, another party, you Christian, conservative, gay, transgender, a Trump hater, feminist, Mensa, rich, poor, atheist, or one of a thousand other camps, all generated by the screen? Or, you know, not, again, it, it uses people. People have an idea, they want to start a camp. Oh, watch how the system will bring that camp into prominence. The Puerto Rican Day Parade is a camp. You understand that? If you love Elon Musk, anagram lone scum, it's a camp for the most part. Okay? The system is just brilliant, evil genius at doing this. And people are so proud that they're in these little camps. My entire family uh, not my entire family, but a, a good amount of my family. I'm off the book now. Oh, they're so proud of their Irish heritage. One family member has gone back, and you know what? Who cares? I'm going to try to associate myself with what happens in Dublin. I don't. I could care less. Put it's just another camp. Even um, patriotism is a camp. I don't play that game anymore. What system-generated camp are you proud to be in? Do you have a sticker on your shirt that says, Voted? That's a camp. The sticker should say, Retarded. Putting on one of these cloaks every day, putting on the cloak camp, is exactly what the creature wants. It seems that every time the system can slice and dice us into camps, we take another step away from unifying to breathe life into the bits of heaven that still exist here on this realm. Instead, we're manipulated to foster more hell for it. Why would the system endlessly work to divide us if we collectively aren't a tidal wave of reality creation and much more than the body, the meat suit? Why would it work so hard? Remember in Ghostbusters they eventually had to combine streams, if I remember correctly? I mean, our streams can never be combined to fight the ancient evil. If the white Ghostbuster is at a KKK rally and the black Ghostbuster is at a Black Lives Matter rally and the Bill Murray Ghostbuster is trying to get in Sigourney Weaver's pants, then we just can't combine streams and we need to combine streams to get the ancient evil. The ancient evil that actually presented itself in Ghostbusters. Why would the creature dangle its carrot forever with such vigor? 
through its engineered society, if we collectively have no influence on reality, and they can just do it all themselves. They can't do it all themselves. That's obvious at this point. They need us. It's not about money or us building things for them. It's a spiritual battle of the highest order. And I don't like battle because it implies we need to go fight them. No, go out and fight. You're, you're just engaging the screen. The battle is to forget the screen. To say, I don't play this. And to strengthen yourself. That's the battle. But why would something with no power need to be divided and endlessly sliced and diced? The system reveals the truth of us in the way it acts towards us. The system reveals the truth by us finding its opposite. Things in this life are not as real as people believe they are. There's much more evidence now that this is just some other form of dream state than rocks are heavy and this thing's real and that thing's real. No, it's pretty provable. It's uh, almost observable that reality is mostly fluid. There is even merit for the notion that we all carry our own reality bubbles with common elements to others, but not exactly the same reality. There is merit to that. And you know, all these people coming forth and saying, oh, the double slit experiment is a hoax. You know, fine. You know, that, stay, stay on that, in that train car. It's pretty clear that this is some sort of fluid reality. Pretty clear to, to those being intellectually honest. You know, there's still people just dig in. They just, they hate when the conversation goes in this direction. So be it. The creature understands the nature of this reality, how it can be molded and shifted in its fluid nature. And it understands that at least collectively, at least collectively, if not individually, the population of real human beings manifests reality to some degree. This is obvious at this point. Again, this is one reason for the long assembly line of dangling carrots and baited hooks. The hellish state they want to create in this illusory snow globe can't be built directly by the creature, or so it seems. It must convince Dorothy to step off the yellow brick road and build the whorehouse herself. Because humans are reality creators, every so often the creature may actually attempt to have humanity manifest its own destruction to a degree. Wars might be entry level to a bigger show that it's trying to create. We have to be very careful how we are creating the hell that it wants. The creature seems to be able to bite off only as much as humanity will allow. And it's teaching us to allow more and more of our own molestation year by year. We absolutely give it more uh, power. Voting, for example is a spiritual contract that says, yeah, continue to screw us over. I'll actually vote for it. I'll actually campaign for it. I'll actually give money to this party. You know, it gives them the spiritual uh, cosmic karma get-out-of-jail-free card to keep screwing us over. The creature seems to draw power and sustenance from the state it puts us in. The entire society, if you think about it, is bred, created at every level to breed worry, anxiety, fear, anger, stress, learned helplessness, attachment, I mean, all the unnatural things it could lay down on us so that it has in this crafted society. It's like at their boardroom. Did we miss anything? Did we? Is there any other way we missed to screw them over? No, I think we got it all. Okay, make it so. You know, if the goal of society was not to put us into such a low-frequency state, as we've discussed most of life's problems would be fixed by now. They would be. If the world was real, an 80,000-page tax code wouldn't exist for Waffle House waitresses. If the world was real, drug commercials wouldn't have 30 to 60 seconds listing disgusting side effects while you're eating dinner for the last 35 years. Again, that if the world was real list that I presented, that was like half of it. And then there's about a thousand things that I missed. The list is endless. Your life, year by year, gets more stressful. There's more cumbersome circumstances in our lives. It gets stranger. This is all by design. All by design. I, I, I really believe 80 to 
of all the hassles and headaches and I lost my password. I got locked out of my account. It's this all I just called uh, Verizon and uh, we're experiencing longer than uh, longer wait times than we anticipated. Really? You've been then you've why haven't you fixed that? Because that's the message I've been getting for 15 years. It's all by design, but the people executing it or moving the chess pieces, they're not in on it. All they've been trained to do is move the chess piece. They don't see how the big picture is being laid down from above. They're, all the little minions are not in on it. The creature is impressively patient in its work, taking small steps over centuries in some cases. The intentions of the creature in the game it endlessly plays is easily seen by a few of us and non-existent to billions who literally wear veils. No, we all we we know now we we all still wear some veils, no doubt about it. Don't think we're all just completely awake. We have our head completely popped up out of the water. No, we don't. We have to remember that. We all still wear veils, even me. I mean, and I've been doing this for how long? And absolutely, I go, oh my gosh, how did I not see that? You know, maybe we all still have ten veils, but most of the people around us have hundreds to remove. We know it's not that many people around us just choose not to see, like we thought in the past. Or they just, you know, they don't want to see it because it disrupts their worldview. We know now they literally can't see it. Or they literally can't see what we see. Um, Or even a chemtrail. You know, would they see that there's a line up there? Yeah, but do they see how blatantly obvious it is? No. It's like they're looking at something completely different, that we are pretty sure uh, the fabric of reality works this way, where veils prohibit people from seeing, even though technically they may even describe what you're both looking at at the same time. Um, I just can't, I know that's a little cryptic, but I can't put it any, any clearer than that. Basically, trying to wake anyone up then is as futile as resisting a Borg invasion with an Apollo 11 capsule. We are currently like Carol Ann, trapped in the metaphysical void of the poltergeist closet. The beast wants us near to it. It's full of tricks to keep us in the closet's vortex. Most people don't even know they're stuck in the closet. It doesn't just want us paying attention to the screen the way a cat would follow a game of Pong on a television set in the 70s. It wants us, in a way, to merge with the screen or reach out and engage with it. It's wonderfully satisfied as billions try to project themselves out onto the screen. So there's noticing it, but then there's projecting out, or metaphysically projecting out, is what it wants. Showing the world how wonderful your casserole came out by posting it on Facebook, in a tiny way, is projecting yourself out into the matrix or onto the screen. It, it wants to, but it just can't reach out and grab you. You must willingly project yourself out onto it or, tr- or merge with it. Like the American Psycho movie. Uh, he's obsessing that his business card may not be as nice as others, other people around the table. Three-minute diatribe obsessing about the business card. It's brilliant. The name of the movie? American Psycho? A truth drop in the name itself? Yeah, absolutely. The tagline of my book, I wrote, The Matrix is on the verge of becoming real. When I wrote that, I don't even know why I wrote it. I just felt it. But it makes more sense to me now. I see it more clearly. Having one's head in one's phone all day long. Text, 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 text. These kids, head down. Text, 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 text. Head down, head down. It's the first step in like a marriage or emerging into the matrix, or the matrix is on the verge of becoming real, or projecting yourself out onto the screen. It's the best way I can describe it for now. If I describe society as the 360 degree IMAX, or something physical that surrounds you and your reality bubble, that sounds like a prison cell. But it's all kind of what you do in this life to, to make it real or not. So if you spend your entire life giving life to the screen, perhaps you do, in fact, build Shawshank's walls all around you that become very real or extremely real at the moment of your death. 
That way, you'll never get to see say what an a-hole. Maybe this life test is about making the 360-degree satanic bubble all around us. It's about making it weak and porous and flimsy and dissolving away. But what do most people do? Most people just breathe life into it. And most people gladly, um, they, they cement butter their own walls that are being built around them. You know, let me hold that for you. You know, we're, we're, our, our life test is to, is, to, is to take all power away from it. I think we're probably just free to walk out of here. Uh, walk out of Carol Ann's closet upon our death. If we so choose, that is the intention that we have set. That is what we expect. And it's the resonance and frequency we've built for ourselves using the tools that this life affords to just pass right through the filter. There could be a filter, as I've talked about in the past. You know, if you create something in and of yourself that they don't have the ability to touch. I think the tools are right here to do that. Okay, I really believe that. But if we spend our lives breathing life into the substance of the IMAX screen for it, now, I don't think the answer can be both complicated and difficult. I believe it's very simple. But the work is hard because this place is so darn tempting on all fronts. Most smokers, for example, they can't even go 12 hours without a cigarette. That's just one of a million temptations we have here. Things like that. The life test is hard, but it's simple. And it, and I don't think we have to be perfect. Okay, I don't think we have to be perfect. You know, we wouldn't have never uh, agreed to this. Uh, you know, yeah, if you believe you're an immortal spirit, in a, in a way you agreed to this. No, you were just, we were just so stupid. We were just tricked here, came into the present planet, no way out, no escape, recycle, recycle, recycle. No, if you if you look inside yourself, Clarice, your inner tuning fork, you know, this is to me, as I said, much more of a massive test than it is a recycling hell center. How'd they get us here in the first place? If that's the case, they don't, they just don't operate like that giving us clues, like I've said before. Okay, these are the absolute basics, the way I see it. Through all of this, I've spoken too much in analyzing what's out there and how the screen operates. Again, that's just not what it's all about. This is a life test that's only about what you can do for yourself. This realm provides all the tools we need to win the life test. And like I said, even if it's a recycling trap, to beat however the Roach Motel is constructed. Quote, winning has nothing to do with the screen, other than your ability to make it impotent. There's nothing to fight out there. And even if there was something to fight out there, it's out there. It's out on the screen. From the perspective of your life test, Donald Trump is no different than Tom and Jerry. When you really think about it, isn't it obvious that's exactly what it would want for us all to engage in a never-ending fight with it, or even a physical fight with it, just breathing more life into this physical realm, like that's all that matters. It would, it wants that, you know, militia groups. It, it wants you to fight it. Of course, it does. We can just sense that in every fiber in our being. Plus, any fight is outside ourselves, as above. If we fight on this level. So below, the corruption of our inner spirit essence. I don't love the word when people say surrender to it. I don't love that at all. There's something, but, but the advice is generally sound. You know, life throws you all this bullshit. You know, it wants you to stress about it. It wants you to worry about it. Oh, I'm going to be late. Some people just, they like the word surrender. Is this is this the way the life test is? And fuck it. Just surrender to it. Yeah, shit happens. And surrender to it, surrender to it. That's more healthy, of course, than getting caught up in the anxiety, worry. I just don't love the word surrender. But uh, it, it, it might work for some people. So one place to start is just tiny little small victories for yourself. hundred times a day, for many people, the system will place a fork in your road. 
you have a hundred opportunities a day then to do what it wants or choose the other way. At this point, we can smell exactly what it wants. Spike Lee pops up on the red carpet. You know, five years ago or ten years ago, I would have thrown my drink at him. You racist son of a bitch! Would have thrown, got all upset. Why is Spike Lee at the Oscars? He didn't have a movie this year. All right. Now we say, that's what it wants. Or which way are we going to go? We know which way to go at this point. You know, uh, what's the poem? Uh, I chose the path less traveled, and it has made all the difference. The path less traveled. Is that just a cute Robert Frost poem or another truth drop? Of course it's another truth drop. Because I don't, I don't think that poem's good enough for it to be world-renowned on its own merit. If you go read it, it's not that good. It doesn't matter. It, it needs to push that poem to prominence. Then they could say, we told them. We told them all over the, in mass media and poems and music. We, we showed them the way, because we have to show them. And these dummies just didn't pay attention to it. Well, we're going to pay attention to it. Although we don't even need that. We don't need to be analyzing these types of things because we already know what to do. You know, my friend uh, wants me to do a breast cancer walk. Sorry, I'm not feeding the billion dollar companies who hold back the cures so the CEOs can buy $5,000 Tyco Dennis Kozlowski shower curtains. Oh, look, on the news I saw the other day as I walked by some television, a decision 2020 is heating up. Biden and frauds like Bernie Sanders. Oh, decision 2020, how exciting. If I see a second of it by walking by the TV section at Target, I'll just laugh at it. In fact, that might even be giving it some emotion. Maybe you shouldn't even do that. Pathetic clowns and puppets like Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Who on earth could believe any of that clown show is real? Step one ain't hard. What does the system want me to do? How does the system want me to be spiritually? When you can just picture what it wants, make yourself into the exact opposite being. Visualization, visualization is very powerful. Intention and visualization, very powerful. It's, it's, you know, it's a form of, 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 of magic in this fluid reality we, we do possess. Oh, magic, that's satanic. No, 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 no. You know, a lot of of, of our powers have been withheld from us, and and, and everything else has been tainted, so you shouldn't play in these areas. No. You want to bow down to exactly what the system wants, be my guest. I'm going to try everything. I'm going to fire off every bullet. I'm going to see what works. Imagine the powerful being you are every day through visualization. You've heard people say, step into it. Do it. Try everything. Don't hate the screen, though. It's better to simply imagine it dissolving away as, as of no consequence to your life. Okay, then, if it's all about just working on ourselves, the life test is just working on ourselves and not engaging outward. The process starts with a proper understanding, though, of what is you. This is where it gets a little, can become a little bit complicated. Seriously, do you know you? Do you mostly identify with your body and ego? Most people do. That's the body and ego, master blaster, or whatever other name you want to call it. Even Sigmund Freud talked about the id, the ego, and the superego as three aspects of ourselves competing with each other, almost. Like we have three separate entities inside of us. You know, truth drop? Yeah, probably. If the body is 100% of this material realm. Do you think your body's going to be pleased? You're doing everything in your power to raise yourself up spiritually, which which is actually about removing ties with the 3D realm? Body might, might not be very happy with that. Body, separate from what you know of as, as you. Okay, body completely tied to this 3D realm. So you're trying to remove yourself from it. I don't think it's going to like it. A car wants to be driven. Was the largest horse farm in Oklahoma thrilled when the Model T was invented? Respect your body. Have a kind, symbiotic relationship with your body. You know, 
do what you need, but do what you need to do to progress spiritually. The last time I had the flu, I, I had a conversation with my body like it wasn't what I call me. I said, body, look, you, we've seen this same virus or version of it how many times now? I mean, get on it, you know, two to three days, I want to feel better. And I, I did start to feel better. And, you know, was that the difference? Well, who knows? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try those sorts of things. I had a conversation with the body. I said, look, this is nothing new. You know, I don't, I don't want this to go into my chest and I don't want to cough for two months. Knock it out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything I can for you, body, and the decisions that I make to help you do that. Sim, complete symbiotic relationship. But you are not your rent-a-car. Be aware that in some cases, the body, in some cases, the body may be a saboteur working on behalf of, you could say, the three-dimensional realm to keep you from your goals. Just this is all have to be on the table. Again, I'm not, I, you know, I, I respect my body. We work symbiotically. It just, people have different relationships with different aspects or parts of themselves. First and foremost, it is of this 3D realm, as I said. So you could say, who does it work for? Does everybody's body work for them? Or do some people's body actually work for the system? Think about it. Does it work for the screen? Will it crave alcohol and drugs? What do you think craves alcohol and drugs? Your spiritual self? No, the body. The body, the spiritual self can can, can kind of, you know, in the case of, uh, if you like to have a couple glass of wine, can draw, I think, pleasure from that. But it's the body. If, if, it's, if you're craving these material things or you're hooked on Oxycontin, this is the body, okay? So the body may may push you to be gluttonous uh, and, and, and want you to balloon up in, in weight. It can be a saboteur for some people. It will team up with your ego. The other double agent that potentially works for the system or the screen. So, uh, you know, body teams up with the ego to, you know, to, you decide to you decide then you should take that girl home at 1 a.m. in the morning when you've got to have a big presentation at work the next morning. And you're pretty sure she slept with the entire Philadelphia Eagles defense in the last five days. But the body and the ego, oh, you should, you're going to take her home. Now, do you think that's really your spiritual self going off with that girl that slept with the entire Philadelphia Eagles defense in the last five days? Is that your spiritual self making that decision? Or is that the body and the ego working against you? in this 3D realm. And the ego not representing you. See, that's that's the thing. The part, the frontal lobes that just think in English, that's got to be me, does it? The body sometimes makes you really tired when you're about to have a spiritual truth revealed to you. Is anybody listening to this now getting is exhausted? Like you want to go take a nap. That happens to me. When I watch an interesting video that gets me thinking in completely new ways or helps my spiritual progression. I get so tired. Is that something is a saboteur? Maybe. Just just keep this type of thoughts on the table. Most people, of course, your neighbor and your cousin, they just think, oh, who am I? Oh, I'm this body and I'm this ego that wants to go have a sex act. You're missing... You know, that's what the reality uh, bubble that surrounds us, the screen, that's what it wants you to say is you. So every day, simple steps. Carry yourself like an immortal being that affects reality in your intentions and decisions. Carry yourself and believe it. Why not set your intention upon everything? What do you have to lose? What do we have to lose? Set your intention on everything, from a chemtrail to a banana. What do we have to lose? I'm going to say, every banana I ever eat, body, please absorb this nutrition from this banana. And Mr. Banana, thank you for providing your nutrition to me. Now, if that sounds corny to you, which it is, it sounds corny, but where's that thought coming from? Is it coming from the real you or coming from society's script? That says, well, Don Lemon never told me to thank my banana. He never said that could help me in some way or potentially help the banana. Um, Don Lemon, for the most part, never actually even asked me to thank my lemons. So, you know, yeah, of course society would say something like that is, is idiotic. 
but I like it because it's the opposite of what society would prescribe. And guess what part loves to carry the orders of the screen? Just loves to follow the marching orders of the screen. What part of you? Your own ego. Remember, this section is about considering what may or may not really be what you call you. The ego in this realm is a child bred of the system. And it will work with the body in some cases, in some people, to corrupt your spiritual self. For all the men who have ever chased women to the wee hours of the morning, looking for a five-second sex act, or the culmination of five seconds, where do you think that motivation came from? Okay, Is that spiritual progression of the highest order? That's the ego teaming up with the body. They're both squished together in the driver's seat of your avatar, your avatar. Both drive in the car, while your spiritual self is tied up in the trunk. Where was the real you when that degrading and reckless behavior was happening behind the Waffle House with Tiger Woods? Was your spiritual self horcroxed off into the netherworld, stuck in Ravenclaw's last item? Is Harry Potter a truth drop? Of course. Society's a boggart. Call it ridiculous. Perhaps the main trick and the purpose of this realm is to cut every tie with your spiritual self, which is somewhere else. Maybe that's what this realm's decide to do. Oh, this person coming in, oh, they, he has fa- only five ties left to his spiritual self. Well, cut them all off, and then he'll just be out back with Tiger Woods behind the Waffle House with those girls, and then... Um, that his spiritual self will be completely horcroxed off and will completely have accomplished what we want to have accomplished as the screen. Maybe that's what an NPC is. An NPC, what we call a non-player character, these lifeless souls that seem to be all around us anymore. Maybe that's what an NPC is. The material realm, working with its double agents, in some cases the body and the ego, has cut off all spiritual ties. The last one's cut like a ribbon cutting ceremony then the then whatever is here that's left is an npc and maybe your spiritual self then is trapped remember the beginning of superman 2 zod and those other two were trapped in that that pane of glass just floating around and it took a nuclear explosion to break them out who knows how they drop truth it's possible so related to the NPC, to me that's what the Gollum character in the Lord of the Rings represents. Gollum or Schmeagel. <laughs> my, my, my precious. What is the precious? We've talked about, about this. That's what that thing represents. The only thing left is the shell, the meat suit, all spiritual ties cut, completely spiritual degradation. That's what the screen's trying to devolve all of us into, in my opinion. And um, maybe that's what happens. When you're out of soul tokens, you become Gollum or Schmeagel. You're out of soul tokens. You know, looking at the precious. <laughs> it will, the screen will try to make sure your spirit is horcroxed off. But of course, that's up to you. We sense this realm gives us all the tools we need. It's up to us. None of them are cool, according to the judges on the screen. No path here for spiritual development is cool. Well, the ego, anything that you could really do for yourself, the ego is going to hate that. The double agent is going to hate that. The American Idol judges on the screen are going to say, oh, that's ridiculous, that's stupid, that's corny. You don't have the latest fashions, you don't have the cool car, you don't have the beach home, you're off. And, and people are, how many, you know how many people in my family have, in a polite way, told me that basically I've become a failure? And they just, I, I'd love to argue with them, but I can't. It, there's no point to it. It's a joke. So I just, I'd love to say back, and I don't say anything back. And they don't just say directly, I'm a failure. But we well, used to have a big corporate job 20 years ago, and you just let all that go. And now you can't even get a job, blah, blah, blah. Like, so <laughs> using the metrics that the screen has laid out, comparing me to the satanic metrics that this realm affords, the people would, would say that Matt and most of people listening here, I'm sure, oh, we're failures, okay? But, but I don't want to be measured per the metrics 
of the screen. You know, there's a little bit more at stake here, like our immortal selves. You know, I'm pushing 50. Who knows how many years I have left on this earth? It's it's a blink of a blink of a blink of a blink of a blink. I think the next few trillion years are more important. I'm going to put my chips over there, not uh, put my chips here, where maybe if I if I can land this certain job, then I can lease this certain car and get this certain sex act. Well, isn't that isn't that wonderful? He's a winner in this reality. Tell him what he's won, Johnny. You're a winner on this 3D satanic realm. Don't forget the main point of the section. This is a life test that's about you doing for you. That's all it is. But that's not selfish. You know, please, that's not selfish. If you do for others, that's doing for you. That goes without saying. Think of this life test, though, like a roulette table. Sorry to, you know, to compare the life test to some satanic gaming device, but this is a pretty good analogy. The ball is spun around the wheel of numbers. How do you make sure you win? By placing a chip on every number on the table that you can, and on red, and on black. Place chips down everywhere. Cover all your bases with chips. Cover all your bases with chips, in this case they're what I call soul tokens. If you pick just one number or one path, it's kind of a shot in the dark. Maybe you you need to get pretty lucky. Maybe it's that simple. You need chips or tokens to be able to place bets down on all the squares. But how many tokens or chips do most people have? How many soul tokens have most people developed for themselves over the course of their lifetime? Very few. Like, you come into this realm maybe with 50, and the realm tries to take all of them. And if it gets you to zero, well then you become a Schmeagol, or a Golem, or an NPC. It seems to be that's the way the realm works. So maybe the first part of our lives, you know, a lot of soul tokens are probably taken. Hopefully they don't take too many from us from being stupid kids. But once we mature and should have a clue, then we're supposed to, the deposits are supposed to go in the other direction. You see what I'm saying? So most people, they they just, they have no even concept of the, the, the soul token principle, the way they live their lives. Did most people, you think, get a bunch of these tokens that we may need to pass through the membrane after death or whatever awaits us? Did they get a bunch of them when they left their closing, when they closed on that new beach home in Avalon, New Jersey, $1.2 million? Did the realtor that was at the closing get a bunch of the spiritual soul tokens when her commission check came in on that same beach home? Which would have been what? Uh, oh gosh, you know, probably would have made like seventy thousand dollars on that on that transaction, and working for a few days. Now, I'm not saying wealth is bad if it's used positively to effectively, uh, collectively, I guess, to to affect humanity in a positive way. Of course, wealth it, it is you know it's pretty hard to go without it in this realm, and if you have a bunch of it, there's so much good you can do if you have a bunch of it. Um, but it is amazing. This is a rare exception. I mean, people in, in a video two or two back actually thought I was uh, I was thanking Bill Gates. Uh, you know, I should put an IQ test like that in the beginning of every video. Yeah, I was really thanking Bill Gates. I mean, how what, how long have you been with this channel? Um, no, Bill Gates is a monster, of course. Anybody that says they're giving all their wealth away, and you look at their wealth today, and it's still about ninety billion, but 20 years ago, he's giving it all away. You know, look, it's just, we just see this over and over. The people that have ridiculous amounts of wealth don't do anything good with it to help humanity. They don't, and and, and they're probably simply not even capable of it as NPC or creatures of this realm or minions that serve the screen. They're probably not even capable, uh, nor would they even want to use their wealth uh, to do any good. Um, you, if you gave me ninety billion dollars, you realize? I mean, they would—they'd probably have to come in physically. I'm just saying. Do you realize the wrecking ball on reality that I would be if you gave me ninety billion dollars? They'd have to come physically get me. I mean, because it would—they would just be too much havoc on reality itself for the better. 
But all these, what are all of these these billionaires? They just keep working. They just, they're doomed creatures. That kind old man, Warren Buffett, he just, he just keep working. Don't you want to take some downtime at 90 years old and go, I don't know, go see the pyramids or something or go do something? Just keep working. You know, just keep working. They have to keep working. Just the same way as a vampire has to keep sucking from the wrist. That's why these guys never stop working. All right, a lot of their true nature in, is revealed in in the way you know they present themselves. Warren Buffett, he's a kind old man. Yeah, probably sits down at a board table and says, uh, "Warren, you have to decide. We're going to close these three plants. To we're going to make an extra few million, but these twenty thousand people are going to be uh, lose their job, and uh, probably about five hundred of them will become homeless. Well, if it affects profitability, then shut the jobs down. He, he's a monster. They're all monsters." Remember the concept of a hundred decisions a day and the forks in the road? A chance to make a positive decision at every turn? So if somebody votes for the pervert Joe Biden, do you think they get a spiritual token for that? Or do you think they just offered up one of theirs into the system? Setting proper intention, that could affect outcomes, okay? And that can be done by all of us at all levels. Setting intention on everything shouldn't be overlooked when things seem trivial. It's clear that this reality doesn't, quote, get you by having you sign in blood the Book of the Beast, like in that creepy Netflix, uh, very, very satanic, creepy Netflix series, Sabrina. She has to sign in blood the Book of the Beast to be a witch. It's not that blatant uh, how the screen tries to trap us. It does it with us through 10,000 paper cuts, tiny little paper cuts. Its patience with us in accomplishing its goals, as I've said, is inhuman. It only needs one hair from your head per day. That seems like no big deal. It can take a hair every day. But sooner rather than later, you're balder than a porpoise's back if you let it take one hair from you every day. Takes that hair and drops it into Harry Potter's witch's potion. Don't give it any of yourself. But don't ignore the trivial. If you decide to switch, the point of this section is don't ignore the trivial. Think this way about everything. Set your intention on everything. What do we have to lose? So if you decide to switch from Verizon to Comcast, of course, there are pages of fine print and stuff no one will ever read, and there's there's a box that uh, the person that you're on the phone with says, just go on the web and just click, I agree. You've got to click the agree box to everything anymore. Now, I know people will tell me that all of that is there, the fine print and clicking I agree. It's all there just to avoid lawsuits. But does that sit right with you? It doesn't with me. I know that if I examine the terms and conditions and all this stuff in society that I'm asked to click I agree to, I realize that in the fine print, uh, I probably wouldn't find language suggesting that switching from Verizon to Comcast damns one's soul to certain planes of hell with a term in hell that can be reduced a thousand years if I use the promo code Nephilim. However, there are all these endless agreements in our lives, aren't there? All these times we're asked to click, I agree. Now, all those billion dollar companies, think of it, they really have to be careful to protect themselves with fine print because grandma and grandpa practice law in their spare time and they're going to take uh, millions of dollars from these big companies if they decide to sue them. That's what all that fine print is for. I mean, what would be the basis for the lawsuit anyway in this fine print that comes along with switching your cable company? It's a a big lawsuit somebody could bring against the cable companies by if they drop the weather channel or something. To me, it's all cumulative agreements. It's tiny little paper cuts getting you to, if not accept the system, to try to basically merge with the system. Okay. So I'm not taking any chances in any area. I'm not going to go live in a cardboard box either. So these agreement boxes will present themselves to me and to you for the rest of our lives, I'm sure. However, from now on, I'm proclaiming before I click the box that Clicking this box is simply, I'm just announcing, simply so I can get TV in time for the game. I'm going to say it out loud. I don't know what all this fine print is for, but I want to make it very clear. I'm not giving any energy or substance to the system by clicking this box. 
if this language in this fine print, which I'm not going to read, is about anything more than just this company trying to avoid a lawsuit, then this is a trick. And I don't agree to it. And I don't comply. Also, I'm not my straw man of first name, last name. Breathe life out of that straw man name, first name, last name. Take power away from it whenever you can. For it's not you. It's not you. It's what the system wants you to believe is you. It wants you to feed it power your entire life. Maybe that's what it has control of at the moment of your death. Perhaps there's two yous, one you can't see. The two utes. Truth drop? Probably not. Uh, maybe not in this case. The two, what'd you say? The two, did you just say a ute? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The two yous. Truth drop? Maybe, but probably not. I don't want to go too into the weeds. But, of course, they'll also ask me to click a box that says I'm not a robot. Isn't that interesting? The implication to me is pretty obvious. That I may be a robot, or at some point, I may become a robot. At least from the perspective of whatever stands behind the screen. Or from the perspective of whoever provided that box. Hmm, one day, I maybe I'll be a robot. And I can click, yes, I am a robot. Look, Am I, am, is this a little bit of a stretch in terms of looking at the, the conspiracy of everything? Yeah, oh, I, I'm just trying to get you thinking in a certain way. I understand I'm pushing this too far. I understand much of this would sound completely insane to anybody stumbling upon this video, although you generally understand where I'm going with it. But I'm probably going too far. Okay, you know, if, uh, if we go into the DMV and the guy hands you a pencil... You probably don't have to say, well, I, I take this pencil without conditions. You don't have to, don't take it that far. I'm just trying to get you thinking in a certain way, okay? Because I th in every choice, we can strengthen the part of us that the system and the screen tries to take control of, which potentially affects us at the moment of our death, or we can strengthen our spiritual self and, and cut ties or, or make us put, it's like very slippery, so the system can't really grab us, or, or you understand, get its tentacles tightly wrapped around us. It, it's all how we, we, uh, we engage with it, and how we present ourselves, or carry ourselves in this life. So back to what I put out a few videos ago, those tiny lights all around the eyes of each Final Four basketball participant, I absolutely believe that that's symbolism. That's exactly how this reality works. Making those young men look like cyborgs. And in the book, again, I wrote, the Matrix is on the verge of becoming real. Again, I don't even know why I wrote it at the time or the moment I wrote it. But then just a few days later, I was like, well, I know why I wrote that. I know why I had to have that in the tagline. It's, it abs and it's, this all relates to the, the transhumanist agenda in a merging of what should be a spiritual journey, spiritual self, um, merging with technology, merging with the screen, Sim symbolism that shows how they what they want to do to us. Everybody having their head down in their phone. Oh, if they can, if they can, if you can fully engage with that screen and it can get you to jump into it the way Neo jumped into the stomach of Smith in the, in the first movie, they got you. All spiritual ties probably cut. Your official Schmeagol, Gollum, NPC, they got you. All the tools are here. It's not easy. I think there is one more important thing to consider. There was a movie I saw recently, I don't even know where I saw this, where a little girl had lost her mother. and She was with her father. And she asked her father where mommy was. And the father, you know, describes the stereotypical or traditional, typical, heavenly type scene where mommy is. And then the little girl asks, interestingly, asks her father, how do you know she's in that place you just described? And the father responds with, this is the point, the father comes back with, it's what I choose to believe. It's, he says, right to the little girl. It, nobody, very, very rarely would anybody say that to the little girl. It's what I choose to believe. Remember what we've talked about in the past. The image of the doomed Gollum Schmeagol creature that has had all his life essence sucked out of him or her during this lifetime or the course of many lifetimes, who knows, but 
the day of their death, looking up at the demon creature, once again, we've met before, asking the demon why the earthly torment never ends. The demon looks down at the golem Schmeagel creature that has all its life stuff sucked out of it, has no more soul tokens, and says, Since there is nothing left of you, I can tell you, for you are powerless to do anything with this information at this point forward. You have suffered without end all of these millennia because you never demanded an alternative. These past million years, you had the power all along, and we tricked you into believing you were dependent on us. You walked the path of the system we laid out for you in perfect step, looking for answers in every place outside of yourself, but never within yourself. The key was in your pocket all along. You idiot. You willingly entered every maze we laid at your feet. <laughs> Guys, thanks for listening. I do want to summarize one important point here that I really didn't stress in that reading. But um, I will continue to revise this quote last chapter my entire life. I don't know how close to the mark I've hit here. Um, I think it's pretty close, I really do, to how this reality construct is laid out. And um, one thing I wanted to stress that I didn't mention too much in the reading is the, the bad guys here, quote, end quote, bad guys. You know, it, it's likely their role, literally their role in this realm to play the asshole bad guy, almost like you need that or we all need that to pass our life test or level up. It, it, there's something going on where it's not just them out to screw us for their own. They might get something out of it. They might even feed from our energy, like I've suggested. You know, if they're playing a role, people that go to work get compensated. If they're playing a role, they're compensated. Well, you're allowed to suck their energy up to a certain point. All of that's on the table. But, yeah, are they bad guys? Are they assholes? Yes. But I'm saying the role they play in this realm is almost necessary for us. If it was just you're born and beautiful sunshine has blown up your butt all day long your entire life, and you're jacked off uh, by this beautiful woman and this beautiful woman over here, you know, every time she turns around, a beautiful male type model wants to date her and everything's just beautiful in this land of, uh, of uh, the golden age all the time. Every place is the golden age. What would we learn? What will we learn? Not much. So these creatures are likely fulfilling a role. And in terms of everything I said about, you know, all the truth drops in movies, don't make it a 10-year quest to, to go comb over everything. And just notice, you'll, you'll get used to reading The Matrix Code. Just notice even things as subtle as look deep within yourself, Clarice. I mean, once you see that this stuff, this could be a truth drop. Something is benign. They're everywhere in this uh, in modern media they really are in song lyrics and again we don't need that stuff we, we know what to do you have all the tools you need now readings like this just clarify what you already know you don't need this channel you don't need anybody you don't need to search through more movies to find truth drops and you, you know you have to look to the screen the screen will you know what to do deep down and if you do it, these minions, whatever this reality is, soul trap, what, if you do what deep down you know you have to do and walk that path, these minions won't be able to touch you. Thanks, guys.